Hi, my name is Crystal Fletcher, and welcome to this week's author reading and author advice. This week, we'll be hearing from author Lisa Braxton, and Lisa's novel is The Talking Drum. If you missed my behind the book interview with Lisa, and she tells a great story about how her parents were the inspiration behind her novel, there will be a link down below in the description box and also a link at the end of this video because you don't want to miss it. Lisa, can you please give us a piece of advice to aspiring writers? I would say the best advice I can give is to um, find a group, find a support group of other writers and um, just plug in, plug in because there are so many opportunities that you can find out about that aren't publicized in your uh, trade magazines, writing trade magazines, but people know things. You can get into a group that can help support you and critique your writing, help you improve it. But also they might be able to say, well, I know that this, this editor is looking for a short story over here, or they are looking for submissions on, on, on this. That's, I think, the best thing you can do. In addition to taking writing classes to improve your writing, get into a group and get to know people in the, in the field and the business. That makes a big difference in getting yourself in front of a, an agent or in front of a publisher. Okay. Thank you. And um, Lisa's going to read for us for a section of her novel. And Lisa, before you start, just wondering, can you tell us why you've chosen to read this particular passage? Well, I've chosen to read this passage because it um, relates to um, the centerpiece of my novel, Gentrification, mm -hmm. and how it affects people. And in this excerpt, okay. I'm focusing on Omar Basari. He's an African drummer and his mm -hmm. wife, Natalie. And in many cases, when there's upheaval around you, there can be mm -hmm. upheaval in your marriage. So yeah. that's, that's why I've, I've chosen this. Okay. Okay, thank you. Okay, I'll go ahead. Omar Basari read the notice that his wife, Natalie, held inches from his nose. The Basaris had to pay three months back rent by the end of the month, including late fees, or be evicted. Unless an idiot, Omar muttered as he returned his attention to the peanut paste he was cooking on the stove. Fullerton does not care a fig about us. Natalie flung the notice along with the rest of the day's mail and her canvas book bag onto the kitchen counter. An accounting textbook, the Bellport Gazette and some sheet music slid out. She pulled at the sleeves of her goose down jacket and hung it on a hook in the hallway. I knew a rent strike was a bad idea, she fumed. Why did you listen to those people? The Basaris rented a cramped two-bedroom apartment in the Commonwealth Arms, a pre-World War I building on King Street in the heart of Petite Africa, owned by white businessman James Fullerton. They'd moved there six months ago when a fire burned down their three-story rooming house on the corner of Pleasant and Garfield Avenues, five blocks away. Omar's uncle Mustafa had found them their first apartment a year and a half ago when the couple moved to town after they both dropped out of Howard University in Washington. D.C. After the fire, Mustafa stepped in again, negotiating a reduced price from Fullerton for the couple to live at the Commonwealth Arms. This allowed Omar to cover most of the household expenses with $30 to $40 a week he averaged from his drumming performances. Natalie was studying to be an accountant, but dreamed of acting in theater and film. She had white classmates at Bellport College who got experience and extra money doing bit parts in TV commercials but casting companies rarely chose black performers. So she settled for jobs doing voiceovers and jingles for radio. She barely made enough to pay for her college courses and private voice and acting lessons. Little was left over for anything else. The Commonwealth Arms was in worse shape than the other building they lived in. The plumbing backed up, the oil heat worked off and on. To Omar, the building's problems were minor inconveniences. Growing up in Senegal, he knew nothing of utilities, landlords, rent, or groceries. He spent his childhood in the family care, a compound of mud huts with thatched roofs. There was no plumbing, running water, or electricity. Pit toilets were kept at the far end of the care. At sundown, villagers lit paraffin lamps or candles or sat in the dark and told fables. Once, Omar got workers to fix the boiler, but within days, it broke down again. He went into Liberty Hill and bought fan heaters for the apartment. Natalie had to heat water on the electric stove for bath water. 
she complained that they weren't living much better than villagers from his community. Then one night, the elevator broke. Tenants got stuck between floors for hours. Natalie was forced to haul her books and groceries up six flights. All the tenants were fed up with the conditions. One night, they met in the stairwell to vent about the building's problems. They decided on a rent strike. They would not pay Fullerton until repairs were made. Natalie saw the strike as a waste of time. She thought, she thought there was no way Fullerton would budge and that she and Omar should simply pack up and move. Declaring, the jungle is stronger than the elephant, Omar overruled his wife. Today, all the tenants found eviction notices taped to their doors. On the stove, the peanut paste was beginning to bubble. With a long-handled wooden spoon, Omar scooped up the paste and folded it in with the beef cubes, broth, and tomato paste, warming in another pot. Normally, Natalie wouldn't be home in time for dinner, but her appointment with the voice coach had been canceled. To mark the occasion, Omar used some of the tip money from his drum performances and went to Bamba's Africa Food Market down the street to get the ingredients for mafe, or ground nut stew, one of the few Senegalese dishes Natalie would eat. Being an American, Senegalese dishes were unfamiliar to her. Bamba tuku was out of goat meat, so Omar used beef as a substitute. He ordered half the amount the dish called for so he could also buy a jar of herbs he needed. We shall not let this man chase us from this building, Omar declared. We have the right to be here and to have good services. He could not possibly put all of us out in the road. Nellie glared at him. The man has no heart. What does he care? Thank you, Lisa. Thank you so much. Um, when, when I was reading Lisa's book, the rich um, cultures are really woven throughout the novel and in particular Lisa like every time I went to Miss Uncle Mustafa's restaurant and he oh the food you made me hungry every time. yeah Uncle Mustafa was an excellent cook he really was oh, he certainly was Thank you so much for the reading, for the wonderful advice, and for the insight into your book, Lisa. So there we go again, the talking drum. For our viewers, I'll put links down below to Lisa's website, and you can learn more about her, get copies of her novel. And please come back next week and subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you.